Hey YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. Just want to show you my small setup here. This is my miniature Tesla stout bar circuit that I have um, suspended from the two bars close to the capacitors on this side of the capacitor. I have a 300 watt halogen bulb. Um, in the next portion of the video, I'm going to show this all in FLIR thermal imaging to show the temperature that's coming off, you know, an extraordinarily thin wire here. This is lighting a 300 watt light bulb and will probably be consuming only about 80 watts to do so. On this portion of the circuit, we have carbon electrodes. This base plate is a large carbon electrode. This have a piece of carbon here as a standoff. And the interface between this carbon electrode and this carbon electrode, we will see a spark gap. And I'll just give you a brief interlude of that to show you. That's quite an intense discharge, and that same discharge is sufficient energy to melt pumice, um, which is quite hot. But the fascinating thing is to ask is, well, what exactly is the temperature of that plasma itself? We know the resultant interaction with matter creates an intense heating. But the question is, is the plasma itself fundamentally hot? And I'll attempt to address that with the FLIR-1 neat little piece of kit that I purchased from my iPhone um, as a thermal imaging sensor to address that. So for what it's worth, um, what we will do is show the interaction of the plasma between this plate and this electrode, as well as showing the thermal imaging of this 300 watt halogen bulb and we will figure out if there is a true temperature to the plasma itself or is it the resistance of the electricity permeating through the material that creates the heat because as you know graphite is a tremendously decent conductor of electricity and it also stands up to quite extreme temperatures, let's say 5,000 degrees or so thereabouts. So what we're gonna be attempting to see is the plasma dispersion between this electrode and this little carbon piece here. So that's an intense discharge, and it's sufficient to light a 300 watt halogen bulb. So the amount of energy that's going through there is not nominal. But it is fascinating that this tiny little wire remains perfectly cool during the entire procedure. So for what it's worth, that's the background to this. And after I let this bulb cool off and finish charging my FLAR1, we will do a thermal imaging study to this. Thanks for watching, and I think this should prove to be rather interesting. Thank you very much. The next video will follow. YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. So this is the experimental setup as I showed you in the previous portion um, in FLAR, and here we have the 300 watt halogen bulb, temperature indication, we have the carbon electrodes, temperature indication. We're going to activate the system. The first thing I'm going to do is going to show you the temperature of the halogen bulb as far as the reactant energy dissipation through the halogen 300 watt bulb temperature and then we're going to show the resultant attempt to measure the electrical discharge right here, plasma, and the temperature itself. So here we go. Um, I'm going to turn the system on.
Now, for what it's worth, the carbon electrode as a good conductor did heat up ever so slightly. This one, not so much. And this one here, 90 degrees. Still, as a rule, trying to measure the plasma discharge itself, extraordinarily cool. The resultant temperature of the halogen bulb and the reminiscent is still greater than 248 degrees. So, for what it's worth, plasma itself, the phenomenon, the energy itself, is it truly hot? Or are we really dealing with heat as a resistance phenomenon of a certain wavelength permeating through materials? My argument would say that the temperature is more dependent upon the resistance and or permeation of a certain energy field coursing through a substance than the material itself. So, for what it's worth, all thoughts are welcome, but I think you might find this interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.